Hello, in today's video I'm going to show you how you can selectively hide controls in a continuous form, something that's not possible with conditional formatting. And the way we're going to do that is using the transparency property of command buttons. And we apply the code in the paint event of the detail of the form, where the command buttons are, hence the title Paint Me Transparent. The related article is on my website, isleofdogs.co.uk, Paint Me Transparent, and I'm going to show you two different examples, one more realistic than the other, to get you an idea of how you could apply this in your own applications. Now, first of all, continuous forms consist just of one set of controls. They're repeated for each record, and that means if you try to apply code to them to make them visible or invisible using code, you will actually do that for every single control, so they'll all be visible or they'll all be hidden. Whilst you can do conditional formatting on text boxes and combo boxes, it is fairly limited in scope. You can disable controls, but you cannot hide them using conditional formatting, something that is a long-term request to have changed. However, command buttons, and only command buttons, have a transparent property, and we can use them fairly cleverly, really, to selectively hide controls in continuous forms. It's the only way it's physically possible to do this. And in the first example, not particularly realistic one, it includes text boxes, combo boxes, check boxes, buttons, images, and I'm going to show you how you can actually selectively hide all of these. Let's look at the example. Now in this then, we've got the form I just showed you there, but this is the underlying table. And as you can see, the underlying table actually has entries for every single field for every one of these records here. And yet, for the fields here, which are value B, they're not showing, and again there. For the combo boxes, which are black, they're not showing. For the check boxes, which are actually unticked, so they're out of stock, they're, vis they're invisible. And similarly, for any images which are a question mark, they're not showing either. Each of those items are actually part of the data set, but we've hidden them using command buttons and transparency property. Let's look at this form in design view. And as I mentioned then, we only have one set of controls, and those controls are then repeated and adapted for each record. And you can see here that I've got a command button to cover the in stock field. I've got another command button here to cover the images. And I've got another command button here to cover the catalog value here, A, B, or C. Now, those command buttons are either transparent or they're visible. And that will determine whether or not the underlying control will be shown or not. Let's go back to the form view. Now, to give you an idea of how this works in the simplest thing, and this is based on a forum question some months ago, somebody said that they wanted to be able to mark stock as being out of stock, uh, but not have that reversible. And so therefore they didn't want a checkbox that people could actually alter directly. And as you can see, that's read only. They wanted to be able to do it like this. And as soon as I tick that button, the checkbox disappears. You can now see then that the in stock button here is actually changed for that item. And the button has disappeared. If I change this back again in here, and go up to here, you can see that I can, as soon as I mark something as being in stock, that checkbox appears. As soon as I mark it out of stock, it disappears again. Let's have a look at some of the other items then. If something is item B, then it is hidden. Let's change that to any other letter. And as soon as we do that, and we go up here, you can now see it appears again. Let's change it back to B. I need to move off the record so it actually is saved. And you can see again that it's hidden again. Let's change some of these text boxes here. This one says black at the moment. Let's change that to yellow. And you can see it appears. Let's change that question there to anything else, really. 
information and immediately the button appears. Let's change it back to question and it immediately disappears. So how is this actually done? Well as I said what we're doing is using the transparency property of those command buttons that we've got here. The code is actually very simple but getting the logic right is sometimes a little bit more complex. So for the command button then, the mark out of stock one, if the, the checkbox is, when we click that, if the checkbox was true then it's actually marked false. Fine, that's simple. Now let's go to the transparent property here in the detail paint event. If the command update button is transparent then that tells you that the check stock is not true. In other words it's false. So therefore if we mark this as false then that button then becomes transparent. And therefore you can see here check stock in stock you can see the button mark it out of stock and it's hidden. The next thing to do is to realize though that command buttons that are hidden or rather transparent can actually be clicked so what you need to do is to apply code that actually means that although you can click it, it has no effect so basically we set this that if it is transparent then that thing is true and we do similar code with these here then if the button overlaying that that we can't see is transparent then this value here is not equal to B if it is B then it's, it's actually not transparent and therefore it's covering there. Similarly with the colour, if it's not black, okay, then we can actually see the value in here. If it is black, then that disappears. And a similar thing applies to the image here. So with a little bit of playing out, and it can be tricky getting the, the logic right with this, then you can use command buttons then, the transparency property of them, to directly alter another value and make it a one-way change. So something's out of stock, it stays out of stock unless you change that by a different route. And you can also use it to hide selected images or hide selected combo box values or hide selected text box values. The, the particular example here is obviously not at all realistic but it does give you an idea of the scope that you can actually do with this. But let's have a look at a different example. And for a more realistic example, I thought I'd look at the Northwind 2 orders form. Remind you then that if you overlay controls with transparent buttons, then whether the button's transparent or visible, you cannot actually edit the control underneath it. So effectively, that part of the form becomes read only. It might be best to actually only apply this approach to read-only forms for that reason. Let's give you another example based on the Northwind 2 orders form, a form that is read-only and in the actual Northwind 2 database then it's actually edited by using external forms that you click on and another form opens here. Let's show you my adapted example. Now in this then I've used a simple table for this but I've made the form locked so I can't alter anything in here I can't tick on there, I can't change any of these items here. You'll notice for certain records that there is a paid date button or a ship date button. Those paid date buttons only appear if stock is available and has out been allocated to that order and therefore you're waiting for that order to be paid. So if we click on the pay date button here we then got a choice of dates and as soon as you enter a date that changes to paid, the button disappears so it can't be unpaid and now you've got a new ship date button appear. Now the ship date therefore needs to be clicked when you're actually going to ship that order. So we click that, again set the date, and now the ship date button disappears as well. Let's do this for a different one. And as you can see, we've got a very simple way of editing 
items on a read-only form and this one is more realistic so again we only see a pay date button if stock has been allocated and we only then see a ship date button once we've clicked the paid date to actually set the date where the payment was made and we only then see the ship date button until we actually ship the order and the status changes from allocated to shipped similarly here changes from new to paid and it's a very similar idea to the previous one again we've got two buttons that can be transparent in this case nothing else is being changed on here and we go to here and we've got a little bit more complexity to this then we've got two buttons then and we've got a detailed paid event all the rest of the information on this form here is nothing to do with this particular feature so the paid button then is normally transparent we can't see it it becomes visible only if stock has been allocated and if there's no date in the paid date field okay so if that's the case then the button is, is visible and you can click on it and then a a date entry a date picker comes up it's my better date picker uh, property here because we can't actually use the built-in date picker for access and then at that stage it, it changes the status to paid it then alters the other button the ship date one to become visible and on to the next stage similar thing happens with the ship date button this is only visible if the order status name is allocated and if there is no ship date but if, if also the pay date is not null in that case we get a date picker again and then if the user didn't cancel then we update the record to set the status as shipped and the order as being closed and the button disappears and the final thing then in the trans in the detail paint event paints the buttons to be visible or not and there is a, a an error 2424 that can occur if no other button is visible so we just go to avoid that by error handling and then we set the status of the buttons to be transparent or not depending on the conditions of the other fields that I've just mentioned there. That's basically all there is to it. It's a simplified version of the Northwind database orders form and if we go on to the final slide then that's all for today. If you found it useful please read the article that goes with this and you should be able to get a detailed understanding of how to apply this in your own applications. Add a like to this video, leave a comment suggest topics for future videos in this series and best of all subscribe and you will then be notified whenever I upload new videos and there will be a series of videos about extending the functionality of continuous forms of which this is just one. Thanks again, see you soon.